Hello guys! Today I'm going to review Tales 3.5, which was just released a couple of days ago. For those who don't know, Tales is a Linux distro based on Debian Stable, focused on security, privacy, and anonymity. It's a live distro which you boot off a DVD or USB stick, therefore you can carry it around with you using it on any computer without leaving traces behind. It forces your internet connections to go through the Tor anonymity network, thus preserving your privacy. Tales has been suggested by Edward Snowden to anyone concerned about their privacy and free speech. And this is the welcoming screen that Tales presents to you. There are a few options you can set here, like language and region and additional settings. Under language and region you can pick your language, select a different keyboard layout or format. Now additional settings. The default settings are safe in most situations. To add a custom setting press the plus button below. Let's press it and you can see that there are further options you can enable or disable. Perhaps the most important one is the administration password because it comes off by default, meaning that you cannot use the root user nor sudo. So let's enable it. And to enable it you have to pick a password for the root user. I just picked a very basic password here and let's see if it accepts it. It did. Well, it would have been better if it checked for password complexity, although this is just a minor detail. Let's now start Tails. Oh, and look, it's quite smart, it detected that I'm running it inside VirtualBox, which is a non-free virtual machine, and it has warned me to the dangers it might present. And without further delays, let's start with a brief overview of Details Desktop, which is basically GNOME 3.22. Just as packaged by Debian Stable. There are a few differences though. Um, perhaps the, the first one you notice it's this one here. Instead of the activities you see an applications menu which presents you quite a nice custom applications menu developed by the Tales team. You can see there are favorites, accessories, graphics, internet, office, programming, science, sound and video, system tools and also a tales menu. Universal access and finally utilities. Something else that immediately catches your attention is this icon here which allows you to see an overview of the onion circuits. The onion circuits are the connections that your computer establishes to the outside world through the Tor network. And each of these circuits has three nodes. The 
entry node, a middle node, and an exit node. You can open each circuit and see the details here on the right pane. Let's confirm which version of GNOME Tails is using by going to the um, System Tools, then Settings, Details, and yes, like suspected, it's version 3.22.2, the same one that comes with Debian 9, Stretch. So, like I've already showed you, Tails comes with a pretty comprehensive set of packages installed out of the box, like for instance um, graphics software, um, an office suit, LibreOffice in this case, and even some sound and video editor software. But perhaps the most important application in Tails, or any other distro for that matter, is the web browser. So let's start the Tor browser. It takes a little bit, but there it is. So, first off, you can notice that um, the NoScript extension is installed. And you can also see that HTTPS Everywhere is also installed, as well as Microblog Origin. These are three amazing extensions, so it's quite nice that they come installed. There's also this Tor icon here that assures you that Tor is enabled. Let's start off by going to the Preferences and Advanced, then Network, to make sure that our connection is really grow going through the Tor network. As you can see here, the proxy is manually configured using SOX on the local host and port 9150. This is where the, the SOX server of Tor is running. Now let's open some random website like, for instance, mm, google.com <laughs> and as you can see, it takes a little longer than usual. It wasn't that long this time, but this is perfectly expected behavior as the connection has to go through the Tor network and it's naturally slower. But crucially, our privacy has been kept. You can click on this icon here to see the Tor circuit for this site. So it obviously starts at our web browser, then it goes into some entry node through the Tor network in Germany, then a middle node in the Netherlands, and finally the exit node was somewhere in France before it reached Google. Now let's try to see what's my IP address. And you can see here that Google is showing you an IP address which I can guarantee you which is not my real address. So my IP address has been preserved 
this one is the IP address from that exit node in France you can see here. Actually the circuit has changed now and it's using um, Ukraine in the middle node and Germany has the exit node. This is something that happens within the Tor network. It um, regularly changes the configuration of the circuits for each connection you establish. Now, the Tails issue is not only about your web traffic. It definitely tries its best to force all your traffic, no matter which protocol, through the Tor network. To achieve this, they have a Tor SOX server running locally. If we open a terminal and check with echo, the SOX server variable, we can see that it's set to the local host on port 9050. This is where Tails has the Tor SOX server running and every, every program uh, that you run and that uses this environment variable uh, we'll try to use the SOX server to connect to the internet. Therefore, um, routing all its connections within the Tor network. So, for instance, um, if we would like to use um, IRC instead, we could edit the configuration of this account here and go into the proxy tab and select or leave as default the use global proxy settings which this means is that pidgin in this case will use whichever server is set on this variable so it would use Tor to connect to IRC. And finally, since Tails is a security focused distro, I couldn't finish this review without running the Spectrum Meltdown Checker script from GitHub, which I've been using lately on all my machines to see whether I'm vulnerable or not to Meltdown and Spectra. They say on their release notes uh, since 3.4 that they are running the KPTI fix which addresses the Meltdown issue and they also mention some partial Spectra mitigation. Let's run the script. Well, starting at the bottom here, we can see that they are not vulnerable to Meltdown because PTI is supported by the kernel and crucially it's enabled on the kernel. So the status says not vulnerable. However, if you check the Spectra 1 variant and, and the Spectra 2 variant, you see that they have no mitigations enabled. For instance, I tried this very same script on my Ubuntu machine and here I can see that the kernel is compiled with support for IBRS slash IBPP support, whereas on this distro it says no. I'm not entirely sure this script is 100% um, trustable, 
but well it's it's been working well on my other distros it could be related to the versions of the microcode for intel and amd processors so i also checked which versions they have packaged and the dates here are from 2017 so maybe this is why they are not showing has has patched against spectre here i hope you enjoyed this review and as always use linux long and prosper